Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and Module 4 on Drivers of Reactions. In this video, number 7, we're going to be investigating Hess's Law. So one of the things that we've, I guess, done along the way uh, in your scientific and particularly chemical journey is we simplified a couple of very complex chemical processes. Respiration and photosynthesis, for example, are two chemical processes that are critically important in biological systems, but they're also extremely complex processes. We've simplified what happens in respiration and photosynthesis in order for us to understand them. Uh, and to study those processes and, and to get a general idea of the key reactants and products that are the result of each of these chemical complex processes. What we do know though is that there are a number of chemical um, reactions where there may be several chemical steps or different pathways that may be involved. When this happens, how do we analyze these sorts of systems in terms of their enthalpy change? One system that you're asked to consider is the reaction between carbon and oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Now this reaction can be reached directly or it can be reached through an intermediate product. This is, uh, I guess, a way of saying that reactant can go directly to product or if we have an intermediate, then the reactant can go to the intermediate prior to turning into the product. There's a certain delta H value associated with each of these processes. And I'll call them delta H1, delta H2, and delta H3, just to make it uh, a little bit easier at this point. To, um, I guess, expand on the example that we just looked at, if I have carbon with only a small amount of oxygen, then I may actually get carbon monoxide as a product, not carbon dioxide. But if I take the carbon monoxide and I react it with another atom, effectively, of oxygen, half a molecule, then I can form carbon dioxide. So I have still gone from my reactant to my desired product, but I've done it in a different way. I've gone through the intermediate of carbon monoxide. This is my intermediate product for this particular reaction. Hess uh, had uh, developed a law for us to use in order for us to identify the ways in which we can simplify um, chemical complex chemical processes. And this is his law. If a reaction is carried out in a series of steps, the delta H value for the overall reaction will equal the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual steps. So if we take uh, carbon as our initial, and we say we want to form carbon dioxide, but we can also form carbon monoxide, which we can then turn into carbon dioxide, then what we can effectively do is add these two processes together. In the um, example I had before, this was delta H1, this is delta H2, and this is delta H3. So consider that we have delta H2, delta H2 is our carbon plus a half O2 gives us CO, and delta H3 is CO plus a half O2 gives CO2. If we're to add these together and bring our arrow down, then what we find is that the carbon monoxides are going to cancel from either side. Consider them as if it, the uh, arrow was an equal sign in a mathematical problem. Where you have a common term on both sides of the equal sign, you can cancel them out. The same is true in chemistry. If you have two chemical substances that are the same on both sides of the arrow, you can cancel them out. Of course, we also have two chemical substances which are the same, but they're on the same side of the arrow. So we don't cancel them out, but we do add them together. So we bring our carbon down, carbon, solid. Now we have a half and a half, which is one whole uh, molecule of oxygen. And of course, left on the right-hand side is just the carbon dioxide gas, which was our desired product. 
What happens with the delta H value is as we added each of the others together, we add this together. So here we have in terms of the number of kilojoules, we've got 0.5, we've got 3, we've got 9 and 3 and a negative. So we have a total of minus 393.5 kilojoules. So in this case, this would be from our diagram, our delta H1 minus 393.5 kilojoules. Mathematically, delta H1 is just equal to delta H2 plus delta H3. And this, of course, is the key to Hess's law. Hess said that if you have a chemical reaction with a number of steps, if you add the enthalpies for each of those steps together, you will end up with the same value as if you carried out the reaction in a single step. This is, uh, again, a concept which can sound simple to explain, but needs a little bit of practice to ensure that it's uh, secure in your brain. So we'll give you a few more examples in class just to help you practice applying Hess's law. And in fact, the next video, we'll actually have a look at, at some more examples uh, in which we apply Hess's law to different situations. Thanks for watching.